So uh, I'm here with my good friend Dan Miller, and uh, I've talked a little bit about how um, it was for me uh, leaving construction mm -hmm. and breaking into retail, which I didn't really know a lot about. Um, so I thought the perfect person to chat with would be a friend of mine who also did, how was it, like 10 years ago? Wow, that yeah. That you did that? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to work together, actually, in construction, mm -hmm. and then um, Dan had a opportunity presented. So uh, I'll stop blathering on and get to my questions here. Um, so I guess, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about um, what your life was like at that time uh, when you left construction and kind of how your job was affecting your life? Yeah. And um, just like what that transition was like yeah. for you at that time. Even just trying to remember that time, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm always in a state of like kind of trying to get it together from the previous jacked up period of time. <laughs> it was like, it was, oh, that was kind of messed up. Okay, I'm going to get my crap together. And like, yeah, I had just been through a lot of really intense, dif difficult situations. And my wife and I had kids real young and we were figure out how to be parents and just a lot of different factors involved. And so I think initially when the job came up to work um, in construction, like with you and on the crew and stuff, it was, it was like, okay, this is a step in the right direction and just get a degree of stability. It was just like, this is clear, it makes sense. And what we did specifically pouring walls, it was just very, you know, no pun intended, like very concrete and very like, yeah same thing yeah day yeah in, day out, easy to just check out and yeah just do the work right? right it was good and rewarding in a certain way it's like there's different like buckets of rewarding feeling like you know i showed up and i did my job and i worked hard and almost just being physically tired and late like laboring to do a good job and know and have that kind of like sense of satisfaction and pride as someone that like physically like gave it all they could give it that day mm -hmm. But I think there was the other aspect of feeling kind of, in some ways, like creatively unfulfilled or just feeling like this isn't really, this isn't sort of like lining up with what I exist with, to do or yeah, to create, yeah, you know, like definitely. I, I want to do a good job and measure a thing right and, or whatever the things are that you do, you know, but it, it never really, I never found a real a sense of identity or, or purpose mm -hmm. in like I measured that other than just I want to do a good job but it was like whether or not I measure a thing perfectly didn't directly resonate with my like s deep sense of self or purpose yeah. you know? so I think it was oh I was always wanting to do some other side hustle or some side creative thing you know to, to what's well, like okay I do this for money and it's cool but it just felt like I'm not, this isn't really what I was made to do. Like That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I can totally relate. Like even doing this, like yeah. blog thing I'm yeah, doing yeah. Like, is a creative outlet to me that I didn't have the ability to yes. do yes. in construction. Yes. And it feels like, yeah, it's something I like want to do and enjoy doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not that I don't enjoy construction, but right. <laughs> right. It's yeah. Just like, yeah. It's not something that I have a passion for anymore. In a way. Right. And you want, it's like you, that balance of, you, you know, this is the real world and you got to like sacrifice and do hard things, searching around in search of food and water and shelter, you know, you're like, okay, this is, it's, you know, it's not the worst thing ever, but, but you're like, is there, what else is out there? What, what kind of horizons are really available and what kind of contribution am I making to the whole story and it's like I what contribution did I make like I was cool I tried to be cool and nice and work hard and measure things good yeah, I'm really good at pulling the yeah pulling the stuff. stuff that is really fulfilling too even like you're saying like at the end of the day like doing the poured walls because usually you would finish a whole house in a day yeah two yeah days. and so it was like you could go home and be like I did a whole yeah. basement today yeah. and that was like super fulfilling yeah I'll steer back yeah. real quick. Um, and so what would you say then was the most difficult thing for you um, in that transition then once you left construction and yeah. you started your new job? Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you want to touch a little on what that new sure. job was and stuff. Yeah. And that, so I, at, at that time, I really had, I don't know how to put it the, the best way, but a kind of a, a reawakening to my, I was raised like in the Christian tradition. Um, you know, there were a lot, a lot of various factors that got involved in just kind 
of searching and trying to figure out like, okay, what is this? What am I doing? What is this all about? What, you know, just different kind of big questions, I guess, that people ask. And so I got real hyped about, about the whole concept of Christianity. And so I wound up getting connected with this church that, um, was just really interesting and really a lot of thought provoking things were happening. And so I got connected and pretty quickly they, I think they sensed in me the, the, the capacity that was a little bit deeper down mm -hmm. and that there was like, just, you know, just like deep kind of eternal questions, I guess, were always stirring yeah, in me so yeah. much. I remember talking about yeah. that stuff <laughs> so all like, the time like, at work. Like, take a break. And, on about, yeah. You know, philosophy, yeah. And religion, and stuff like that. And so they, you know, when we, my wife and I and our family started going to that church, and so they, they offered me this job as like the maintenance guy of that church, it was like a big, you know, big fancy pants church, and it was under construction. And so immediately, that I remember the 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 first thing that was a real challenge and confusing was it had a lot to do more with emails and PDFs and meetings yep. and like almost like corporate leadership type stuff. Yeah. And what was so crazy and super challenging was that there wasn't then a clear at the end of the day, wow, there was a hole in the ground and now there's a basement in the, in the ground. Like it yeah. was just like immediately I came into this role that was like, I sent some amount of emails and there's some stack of work that is kind of vague that is still there that I can do. And I don't know if I've accomplished it or not. It was just totally not concrete, like yeah. <laughs> absolutely not concrete at all. And it was just so, it was like real exciting, but also really disorienting and for a long time, really frustrating. And, and I, I felt like it was like, okay, I know I wasn't totally wired for like just straight construction, but now I'm like, I'm also not totally wired for this business management, uh, like a million different plates spinning, you know, thing. And so no. that, that took me forever to, to get my mind around, which I still feel like I never even got. I, I was going <laughs> to say, I'm like totally in that phase right yeah. now yeah. Um, with the emails and stuff and like mm -hmm. not having any like solid by today i need to like yeah. have all this stuff figured out yeah. it's like i sent out all these emails i'm waiting for responses yeah so then my next question was on the other side of that coin yeah um was there like a specific time when you felt like okay this was the right move like things were mm. gelling um you know i wow. feel confident in this career change yeah well so yeah that was it was a real wild uh i think i worked there for like seven or eight years and for the first three years, I was the maintenance guy. And as the leader, leadership of the church got to know me, they would give me and my wife more responsibility. And then I would have opportunities to, to teach or to like facilitate discussions or lead you know, Bible studies in different groups and things like that. And that was when I really started to feel like, okay, this is where I, I really love to, to teach and to learn and to explore different ideas and how, and to, you know, the, the, as we said, philosophical and theological concepts, I'm like, and talk about it. And, and so as there was the work, it was the same thing where it's like, okay, I've got this work that is like, email the guy about like a form that needs signed or something, you know, and I'm like, okay, whatever, click, click, click. And then it was like, now, as more opportunities opened up to do what I was really genuinely passionate about, those were the moment, the kind of brief um, flourishes of just like exuberant, like this is it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so then as time went on, my wife and I got more and more interested in the idea of being missionaries. We knew some people in Africa and, okay. and it was like, there was a, a big plan like, wow, we're gonna, we're gonna like move to Africa. We're gonna move our kids to Chad, um, Jemaina, you know, it's the, the capital of Chad is Jemaina and it's really, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot that is needed there. It's just pretty okay. rough, you know, it's, it's, but anyway, right as we were about to do that, and then that was like, oh, maybe that, you know, again, we're like sort of feeling around in the dark, like, is this, is this it? Is this it? Is, where, where are we going? Like, and right when we were about to kind of make our final move uh, to like basically pull the trigger to move to Africa, we were asked to lead the youth program 
at the church. And so then I was like, what the F? Like, I have no idea about how to interact with kids. I just have no concept of that at all, you know, other than my own kids. And I'm like a mediocre dad. You know? <laughs> so then we had a decision to make and, and we wound up deciding to stay and, and help uh, kind of help the youth group flourish. And that then that became an even more kind of clarifying zone where I was like, oh, interacting with kids and high school kids, I sort of have an intuitive resonance with that with with them and so then that again it just i feel like even as we're talking about it like it was just a series of like having making an experiment and trying something and then seeing what parts didn't work and what parts did mm -hmm. and then it became like oh i really resonate with like these young young people and and there's something there and then that became like my real passion for like four years we led the we led the youth group and it just it was it was you know f fairly clear that 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 really was like a sweet spot for me at, okay. at the church during that time and but again with that came all this extra responsibility and pressure and it was a huge church and very like go-getter like totally intense mm -hmm. and and so there was just a ton i've probably learned more in those few years there just such a condensed just distilled exposure to so many different concepts and 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 challenging things to overcome or whatever and how people interact and just different relational dynamics and how to get stuff done and that was like just a whirlwind for a long time but i felt i felt like the the two times i could really see in that whole process like clarifying moments about what i was really hyped about was when i was able to teach or, or able to like talk about stuff i was real into and when I was able to like interact with with young people and, and and share my experiences with them or just be open and vulnerable with them about you know what I was hyped about and, mm -hmm. and so I think that that became a real I think those are real critical discoveries there like that I was yeah and I think that's too like a good way to know that you are, are like on the right path yeah is as if you're encountering maybe yeah moments yeah where you're like, okay yeah like this is working mm -hmm. i'm able to move in this direction mm -hmm. this isn't working and i'm able to move away from that yeah. and maybe when you're in a position where you can't move away from something <laughs> yeah. that's when you're like okay now it's time to you know <laughs> there's no redeeming ass this is all this all sucks yeah <laughs> But which would segue into yes. the next question. Uh, so you made another positive yeah. change recently. And so I guess just uh, if you want to touch on maybe the differences in like mm -hmm. your perspective and life yeah. when that wow. when you made that decision versus when you made it yeah. first and like how that's been more positive for your family. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it's been really positive for you yeah. and your family. Yeah. Like this, uh, change. Yeah, that's a real trippy. <laughs> it's real trippy. But like, um, yeah, we... Basically, where we were at was in the church tradition that we were a part of. It's sort of like you know, you give the guy a, a while as a, as a youth leader to see if he's like got chops or whatever. And if you have certain m metrics or something, you like is like maybe there's a possibility that we could give this guy this guy could become a bigger shot and, okay. a, and an even bigger shot, you know. And I was starting to g get a lot of opportunities to preach to the to the main congregate, you know, big church or whatever. And, uh, and so it was like, I was getting more and more responsibilities and more and more opportunities to like do a lot of whatever, like hot shot, <laughs> hot shot, uh, stuff, you know, and then, and everything we were basically, everything we were part of was just growing and awesome and good, you know, but as a result, there was so much, so many meetings and so much pressure and so many different, um, being pulled in so many different directions even though it was all, everything was cool and, and interesting and awesome, that our family, the amount of time I was able to spend with my family just was diminishing more and more. Mm -hmm. And the kind of emotional or spiritual, psychological um, capacity that I had to like be present with my family just was going down and down and mm -hmm. down. I didn't have, you know, there are people I know that are in that, in the church world that have the capacity sort of separate or to unplug and then they can like spend time with their family but like I don't have that mm -hmm. <laughs> that gift you know so 
over, eventually over time, I was like, you know what, this has been really sweet at the church and I've learned so much, but we felt like we couldn't really continue going because we would just keep getting asked to do more and more stuff or take on more responsibility or grow or maybe eventually like lead our own church. It's a, like a multi-campus structure. So, okay. we, you know, th that kind of the end goal would be like, yeah, I want to be a head pastor of my own church mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that was um, kind of a carrot that was dangling in front of me, like, yeah, I want to be the, the man. Like, but uh, a real important thing that happened was, it was, I think it was in the summer of COVID, like 2020, it was the summer okay. of COVID, pretty sure, where my wife was just like, you know what, I don't, I can't, we can't do, like, it's just going to be too much, like, mm -hmm. we can't, which deep down in my heart was the goal to, like, be the man, you know, mm -hmm. I was like, if that's just gonna be too much, like we gotta re like really reevaluate re like what we're doing. So I was like, I thought about it a lot. And then I was like, you know what? If I really care about kids and making an impact with them, but I only, I have to do, spend all this time in these meetings to do all this fancy stuff so that they can show up just a couple hours a week to like my youth group, you know? I was like, maybe I should just go to where they are, mm -hmm. <laughs> try to be an influence and a source of love and encouragement that way. So the big scheme was, I'll just get a job as a janitor at the freaking middle school. <laughs> and then, and then we'll be, you know, relieved of all the pressure of fancy pants, adulty type management business stuff that doesn't really, that I'm not, that I can do, but that isn't really satisfying or fulfilling or interesting to me. And I can do kind of just a menial task that has that element of fulfilling like, okay, these these tasks, I accomplished these tasks, mm -hmm. and there was that, I, that that bucket can be like checked, or that, that box can be checked, like, I did a job, like, I did my job, but then there's this incredible amount of margin or space where you can just have these interactions with kids mm -hmm. that is like, just spur of the moment and, and spontaneous, but that doesn't require any planning, right, because you're just like in the hallway, like, yeah. being goofy or or whatever yeah, just being a light and yeah light. just being a light you know and so yeah so the scheme was i'll quit the church and get a job at the school as a, jan as a janitor as you know secret pastor if you want it <laughs> pastor if you want it Undercover you know, right? pastor. Yeah, under the, yeah. <laughs> or just like eccentric uh janitor you know yeah. whatever you want so then the schedule just completely changed like to just a Monday through Friday, like I, I get to interact with all the kids there and it's kind of basically a stress-free job. Like you can't get that stressed about like Change some spill. Yeah, or like or a, yeah. trash is not that stressful, <laughs> thing, you know? But then I can get, I get home and my kids are coming, my personal kids are coming home and my wife is, the, you know, and, and then we can, we have that time. We have our weekend, like I'm here. Like if I was in my previous role, I would be right now be like, stressing out or be in some meeting or something yeah, right yeah. now you know what I mean? when you say that it's like a lot of people our age that i talking to are choosing that like benefit you know the benefit of being with your family yeah like seeing your kids off to the school yes yeah. um you know having lunch with your kids every day yeah man the benefit that a lot of my friends are choosing over yeah. like an intense career where maybe they can make more money or you know yeah. more prestige or whatever it is and that's um, what I was going to segue into my next question about just like what are your thoughts, I guess, on the American working class? Mm. Like as it seems like especially our generation, there's yeah. kind of this movement going on, mm. people quitting like mid-career. What do you think about the, yeah. the American working yeah. class right now yeah. in history? I don't know. I like I guess I don't have a ton of perspective on it just because I'm so self-absorbed that I only think about myself. <laughs> but I feel like a lot, I think COVID had a pretty big impact on every, in one way or another, and just kind of, if there was some rustling that was happening in people's hearts about like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. That that span of time, the kind of space that existed in that, you know, stuff that was happening during that whole season was just like, what is going on? What am I actually pursuing? What is, Absolutely. what do I actually value? Like, and I think, you know, even just this sort of looming cloud knocking at people's door, mm -hmm. like I'm yeah. isolated. There's this 
plague of death that is just like looming and uh now my whole family structure is like completely flipped around or yeah. whatever like i think it just it i think it caused a lot of people to like ask questions in a more direct and explicit way than they maybe had asked before you know and so i think that i think that's really like society just gets real comfortable and complacent with like the status quo and it just like is like this is just how it is this is just how we do th i think there's a lot of danger in in just the idea of this is just how it's always been done or mm -hmm. or just inertia like we're just going in this direction i kind of like mindless rote like i think when that gets kind of jostled around and it's like whoa, whoa, whoa like that um i think that creates an environment where potentially you could really take advantage of it and like evaluate what Absolutely. you're doing you know <laughs> no yeah what you just said um just kind of triggered a thought that i hadn't really had before um just like things have been changing so fast in yeah, society yeah, in yeah. the last like even just 10 years yeah and i feel like maybe we haven't been really acting like things are changing that yes, quickly with yes. technology and sure. like, the way corporations are set up and jobs and everything and then it was just like when COVID hit and people yeah. were like locked up and thinking about their yeah. lives, they were like, wait, things have changed so yes. much. Like, yes. And it did cause that stirring, I think. And that was when I ended up deciding yeah. to be like, oh, you know what? I maybe do want to get out of construction and pursue something yeah. different. Because it's like, you're right. Things are at this moment in history, in our experience, like in the West, whatever, in, the, in America or in Western culture or whatever, it's like, you, you just yeah like the next thing happens and you're just kind of swept up into this i don't know if it's just like group think or the swarm is just going there and that's yeah. where we go like of course this is what is real and good and true or that or and you're like to actually ask the questions like where are we yeah. act trying to go or like what is the purpose of my life <laughs> is yeah. just no, I think too, just with information, I mean, like, I understand there's all the controversy surrounding TikTok right now. Oh, yeah. Which I get because it has altered, like, the way I perceive life. Yes. Like, I can just sit there and, like, look at the world in a whole other country or something, like, somebody's yeah. just day to day life in 30 second, one yeah. minute, like, clips. And it does. It just makes you think about, like, okay, well, what's going on in my life? Yeah. Like, more than just being like, okay, this is what everybody's doing. This is just the way we go. Yeah, and yeah. You just have this constant flow of information of what other people are doing, like what yeah. other cool stuff people are doing. Yeah. And how other people are surviving. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. But, um, so then my last thing would be, before you go, uh, just do you have a word of encouragement? For anyone who maybe is like in that place in their life, like mm. where you were right before you transitioned mm. into your your new career, yeah. or in that transitional phase, yeah. like yeah. just advice well, for someone in that. Just situation. that uh, I feel your pain, <laughs> 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 and that like you know, I think when you're in those seasons, it is totally disorienting, and you feel like I, I don't know every kind of valley I've been in you know I've been on a lot of my, I'm kind of an intense guy in both directions and so I've had a lot of kind of mountaintop experiences where I'm like I'm tapped into the ultimate truth the force field of good and like every, you know and then I've had a lot of like this all sucks and everything you know I'm just whatever I know that in those seasons of pain or kind of despondency or depression I can feel like you know you're not the, it feels really bleak you know mm -hmm. and it's like that's that's really real and so i know that sucks but i would say that a lot of times it feels like what's happening internally or deep down at the core of one's being like in those seasons of confusion or trying to evaluate that deep down there's some kind of internal thing that's happening that is actually really significant and more long lasting that will kind of inform the rest like whatever the rest of your story arc is going to be like some invisible thing might be happening that even though it sucks during the times of confusion like you maybe more deeply establish what is actually really important to you and uh, yeah I think that's a good a good question to ask you know what to ask the question what do I actually really value like and what 
how, how is what I'm doing like in my life or the, the, the decisions I'm making, how does that correspond to what I hold to be true and valuable and important? Is there, is there continuity between what I value and what I'm doing? <laughs> like, yeah. you know? No, I think that's great advice. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for coming all the way out to Port Moon. My pleasure. It was a good drive. And drinking a, a caffeinated. Yeah, it was my first caffeine in a minute.